BBC Television presents Tony Hancock in... Hancock's Arthur. Half of Midlothian, four, Falkirk, three. Hibernian, one, Kilmarnock, two. Aberdeen, nil, Partick Thistle, three. Now, until the next part of our program, here... How'd you get on? I'm just going to check up. I don't know why you bother. You have been trying for eight draws ever since I've known you. And what's the nearest you've got? Seven home wins and one away. <laughs> Twelve and a half points. What's the good of that? Well, you never know. Somebody's got to win. Well, you won't, mate. Not with your system. Sitting there every Wednesday night with all your relations' birthdays in front of you. <laughs> Signs of the Zodiac. Telephone numbers. What's that got to do with football? Anyway, I don't know with gambling. It destroys the moral fibre of the country, sets up false values, and encourages laziness and indolence. Park at him! Just because they refused you a licence for a bedding shop. <laughs> it's a joke to you, isn't it? It's pathetic sitting here watching you. All those stupid little books you buy with the perms in, every pools expert in the country helping you, stuck here for six solid hours every Wednesday night with your tongue poking out of your teeth, and for what? Twelve and a half points. <laughs> Turn it in, boy. You'll never win anything. And if you did win any money, you wouldn't know what to do with it. I wouldn't, I. I've got it all worked out. I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. It's the only thing that keeps me going. I know I'm going to win one day. I must admit that when I realise that my entire future depends upon the whims and foibles of 11 pairs of dirty great boots from Gateshead, I shut. <laughs> Mm -mm. Well, here we go again. I can't stand chit-chatting dear to the likes of you. My bed have been worth a fortune these last five minutes. Now then, Knott's Forest and Everton home. Here we go again. Twelve and a half points. Do you mind? Aston Villa and Plymouth Argyle. Home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a waste of money. I haven't finished yet. For another 16 matches to check. Now be quiet. Cardiff and Swansea. Home. Charlton Athletic and Sunderland, home. <laughs> Sheffield United and Ipswich, home. Why don't you do a pool where you have to pick out all our home winners? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Every match of love. If you were any sort of a friend, it would be tearing your heart out every time I said home. Brentford and Chesterfield, home. <laughs> Colchester and Newport, home. How do you know? <laughs> Go on, you think you're so clever? Come on, how do you know? Do you want to bet? How do you know? That is what I want to know. How do you know? Have a look. Go on, tell me. What is it? <laughs> it's home. <laughs> but it might not have been. It could easily have been a draw. It was only 7 1. <laughs> there was nothing in it up to half time. Ah, Reading and Bradford City. Home. Southampton, Queen's Park Rangers. Home. Eh? I said home! <laughs> South End versus Accrington. Draw. Carlisle. Draw! Said a draw! I forecast a draw. It's the first draw I've ever done. <laughs> One draw in four years. <laughs> what are you getting so hysterical about this? Well, it's a start, isn't it? It shows I can do it. Oh, do me a favour. One draw. You need another seven for the first dividend. Chester and Workington. <laughs> Crystal Palace and, and Rochdale. Draw. <laughs> Exeter and all the shots. Draw. <laughs> Notts County and Millwall. Draw. <laughs> Alderman Gillingham. Draw. <laughs> Watford and Barrow. Draw. Seven draws, one match to check. I can't move. What's the matter with you? There's nothing, sorry. It's no good, Sid. I've got seven draws up. I can't look at the last one. You'll have to check it for me. I can't look at it. One more draw. 300,000 quid. Well, oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. What's all the result? All right, all right. Wait a minute. Well, yeah. but cry out loud. Come on, what is it? What is it? Here we are. Chelsea versus East Cheam United. Yes, yes. Late kickoff. <laughs> What do you mean, late kickoff? Well, it says here, late kickoff. They can't do this to me. Seven draws and a late kickoff. It's enough to send anybody round the twist. But <laughs> well, what time do they kick off? Half past seven. 
two and a half hours time. I can't wait all that long without knowing. I'd be a quivering mass of disintegrated nerve tissue lying on the floor, twitching away in a pile of fag ends and fingernails. <laughs> I couldn't stand the strain, Sid. Oh, crap, I know I will. It's too much for one man. Oh, shut up. Pull yourself together. What's the matter with you? You only get big dividends when there's only a few draws on the coupon. There's probably umpteen draws all over the country. You know what you'll get? 25 shillings in a tanner, you and thousands of others. Now shut up in a minute and we'll see how many draws there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> seven draws. Only seven draws and he's got them all. Want to go? This could be the biggest win in history. Here we are, Sam. Take it easy. Here, put your feet up. Put it up there. That's it. Make yourself comfy. I'll make you a nice hot cup of tea. Relax. Your old pal Sid is here to look after you. Hello, hello. The vultures are on the move. Take it nice and easy now. Don't worry about a thing. You know what they say? A trouble share is a trouble heart. You want to share my troubles? Then you're not going to. Not a penny. I'm having the luck. How many relations have you got? I've got hundreds of them. And how much do you think you're going to have left when they find out? They won't find out. I put my little cross in the square. No publicity. <laughs> and for a third share, I won't tell them either. <laughs> <laughs> this is blackmail. I'm doing you a favour here, boy. I know your relations will be like a lo plague of locusts by the time they get through here. I think you'll find it cheaper in the long run. <coughs> you're quite right, of course. The noise of two coins rubbing together has always been enough to set the Hancocks on the march. <laughs> right then, the third chair in return for your silence. Now, what's the time? Ten past five. Oh, look, this is hopeless. It's dark outside. They can't play in this. They won't be able to see where they're going. I've got a little lamp strapped on their head. <laughs> How can they be expected to head a ball like that? Oh, stop it, you great big twit. They, they play under floodlights. Well, that's unreliable for a start. <laughs> Get a fuse for a couple of minutes, wallop, ten goals. <laughs> Well, he wouldn't have a chance. Who's in goal for his team, anyway? Chalky White. Chalky White. Oh, well, of course, we've had it, haven't we? <laughs> Never get a draw with him between the sticks. <laughs> Biggest score in history. 90 minutes of kick-off and goals. He's useless, that man, leaning up against the goalpost, measuring himself. <laughs> he can't see what he's doing, that's the trouble. Not only can't he see the ball coming, he has a job finding it was in the net. <laughs> Wandering round the back of the goal, poking away here and there. He kicked his hat out three times last week. <laughs> Who else is playing? Mel Pritchard, centre forward. Mel Pritchard. That's a fine example of athletic prowess. He runs on the field, he's out of breath. <laughs> Saw his first match, he kicked off and had to have a cartridge operation. <laughs> Chelsea will murder that lot. But what did you put him down for a draw for? Because it's the third match on the list and it's my brother-in-law's birthday. <laughs> Mel Pritchard, what a load of old rubbish, eh? I suppose he'll be playing his carpet slippers again. His corns will be playing him up. <laughs> what are you talking about? The way you're chatting there, but you think you were an expert? I'm now saying if anybody's entitled to express his opinions about football, it's me. What? Good grief, my experience. Playing for years I was. You talked to me, schoolboy international, 1936. Mr. Magic, the wizard of the dribble. <laughs> Lovely Peter, pair of feet I had, pointed in different directions. <laughs> Nobody knew which way I was going. <laughs> I'd been playing now, but I had to give it up. Injury? No, no, when they did away with the long shorts. <laughs> we had to show our knees, I wasn't having that. <laughs> 50,000 people laughing their heads off. <laughs> wasn't worth 20 quid a week. Did I ever tell you about the highlight of my career? No, but you're going to, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Picture the scene, Wembley Stadium, 1939, packed to capacity. Duke of Rutland in the box, the cup in front of him. The bloke in the white suit up on the rostrum, bawling his lungs out. Land of hope and glory. <laughs> then we appeared. 90,000 throats roaring a welcome. 90,000 pairs of eyes all on me. Will he do it again? Will he get another hat-trick in the first five minutes? Will he score from the halfway line with a double back flip overhead scissors kick facing the wrong way? <laughs> well, we kicked off. Then with the hope of all the crowd pinned on me, tragedy struck. I went up to our high centre, wallop. Hitted the goalkeeper right in the back of the net. <laughs> How cold I was, I was carried off in a deathly hush, stunned silence. Concussion, multiple bruises, cauliflower ear and a fractured bracket. <laughs> well, they were lost without me. Ten minutes to go, one nil down. Their main hope 
lying on a stretcher surrounded by doctors. I came to. One kneel down, they said. Well, I don't know what came over me, but I remember fighting my way through a crowd. And there I was, standing on the touchline. The referee signaled me on. I swallowed a handful of aspens and nipped onto the field, clutching the blood-soaked sponge to the 16 stitches on the back of my head. <laughs> we started to attack, and the crowd shouted as one man, Give it a hand cop! The ball was cleared high in the air. I caught it on my forehead, balanced it there, tilted my head back, and with my nose holding it position, I was off. Past one man, past two men, past three men, 45 yards. The ball never hit my head. They thought I was holding the lace in my mouth. <laughs> my speed was incredible because the wind had caught me short. <laughs> I couldn't stop. Into the penalty area, fainted past the back, round the outside of the half back, sidestepped the goalie, dropped the ball onto my foot, wallop, grabbed the back of the net. A brilliant goal. Man, one all. Two nil. I forgot to change <laughs> So that was your last game? Yes, well the rest of the team came over and gave me a right walloping. Just walked away and left me. I was still lying there when the greyhound racing started in the evening. <laughs> still that's the way it goes. Oh, what's the time? Quarter past five. Well, it is hopeless. A fortune within me grasp. I can't stand this waiting. Well, why don't we go watch the match? Yes, of course. What a good idea. It'll be like old times. And he played at Chelsea once. We were 2-0 down and 10 minutes to go. I was hobbling on the right wing with a broken ankle, waiting for me chance. The ball came over. Are you coming or not? Yeah, I was only going to tell you about this. The ball came over. I trapped it with me good ankle and I set up an amazing dribble right down the field. We were playing the W formation at the time. Was me and you and Like. What an exhibition. How old are you? What's the point of mankind conquering the moon when we've still got blokes like you down here? I'll make a mockery of the whole thing. Oh, shut up. Not the fun of going to a football match. <laughs> Sensitive ears. Get your rooms in here. Get your team going. Now then, sir, what about a favour? Do me one, will you, Hoppy? <laughs> Oh, well, no, well, no, a sense of humour, eh? You know, that's what I love about football crowds. Strong sense of humour. There was a bloke last week tipped the old knot over my head. <laughs> Very funny it was, too, sir. Now, come along. What about the road, sir? There you are. What about that Certainly one? Certainly not. I'm not going in there looking like a prize bull out of the dairy <laughs> shop. <laughs> what a god you are, sir. What a sense of humour. An answer for everything. <laughs> What a comedian! You know, you ought to take it up for a living. <laughs> now, come on, sir. You must support somebody. I don't support anybody. I'm hoping for a draw. All right, then, sir. One of each. <laughs> Get him off me, coat. I don't want your tatty general election leftovers. <laughs> General election! Oh dear, I'll be in tears next! Oh, oh, what a sense of you and the boy got straight in there! Excuse me, are we going in or not? I can't get away from this walking abadash in there! Closing the gates! Closing the gates! I'll soon see about that! Come on, I'll be right on for a second. Excuse me. Good evening, my good man. I don't know whether you recognise me or not. No, I don't. <laughs> Schoolboy International, 1936. We'd like a couple of seats in the director's box, please. Oh, Schoolboy International. That makes all the difference. With or without cushions? Uh, with cushions, I think. Or perhaps you prefer armchairs and a nice champagne supper at half time. Yes, that would be very nice. Hop it. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Do you mind? The gates are closed. We're full up. Clear off. I demand entrance to this arena. It's imperative I see this match. Go away. There's a good little man. I've got to count up all this money. I've got to sort out all the tanners from the shillings, put them in blue paper bags, take them to the office. What time do you think I'm going to get home tonight? I don't know. I mean, well, I... I've got a life to live as well, you know. I've got a home to go to. Yes, yes, of course you have. I mean, you I... You don't think I like being stuck here in this straight jacket, do you? All you love piling through here. You don't think of me as a human being. <laughs> you just think of me as a hand, poking out, taking your two bobs. Well, I'm more than just a hand. At the end of this hand is a body, a human being throbbing with life and emotion. I'm just the same as you are. If you prick me, do I not bleed? <laughs> if you tickle me, do I not laugh? If you poison me, do I not die? <laughs> I suppose you do. I mean, I'd never really thought about it. <laughs> Punch him in a fag hole. See what he does there. <laughs> Sidney, please, please. The man has a point. He's entitled to his relaxation the same as anybody else. Yes, and he's a very cultivated person too. 
Thank you very much. Not at all. I never realized the heartaches and human dramas that went on inside a turnstile keeper's hut. Yes, it, it gets very lonely at Yes, well, it, it must do. Completely cut off from the mm. world, isolated. Oh, come on, are we going in or not? Please, Sydney, please. She's very touching. Have a little decorum. Carry on. I was just saying how lonely it gets in here. All you people, but I might as well be in a monastery. Get away. All that people are to me is two bob and click, 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 click. <laughs> that terribly sad. Now, only you're bitter. I am. Nobody ever talks to me. Do you know, in all my years here, you're the very first man who's had the, the decency to stop and have a chat with me. Not at all. It's my pleasure. If ever I'm passing this way again, I shall make a point of dropping in to see you. Thank you very much. You're a very kind person. Not at all. Now, will you kindly let us in, please? We're full up off it. <laughs> very good. Oh, it's no good. It's no good. He's barricaded in there. Now, look here, old man. Please, please. Let both of us in, eh? I'll pay you double. There we are. It's essential I see this match. Please. Oh, well, all right. I suppose two more will make much difference. And you have been very, very friendly. Thank you. You did say treble the price, didn't you? I said double. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> you mind? It's stuck. Yes, I know it's stuck. Well, get it unstuck. I can't stay here for the rest of my life. Well, push it. Oh, I'm pushing it. Come on, Sid. Give us a hand here. Watch it. Watch it. You're crashing my ribs here. Look out. Look out. I'll be marked for life. Come on. It's your fault. You're supposed to be in charge of these machines. What happens if there's a fire and 80,000 screaming people come charging through here? I've had it, haven't I? I'll be split asunder. Can't you climb over the top? How can I climb over the top? I can't even move my legs. It's like being in the Iron Lady. Well, if we had an elephant, it could lift you out with its trunk. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're a great help. <laughs> Must be hordes of wild elephants roaming around Chelsea football ground. What about a crane, then? That would be most undignified. Call the fire brigade. Do you mind your own business? Aren't there really? any engineers on duty? No, only me. Hello, hello, hello. Is he making everybody laugh again? <laughs> I am stuck in the turnstile. <laughs> Comedian. <laughs> hey, do something funny again. Go on, do something funny again. Come here, come here. He wasn't, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> 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 <laughs>